वी आर इन बेंगलुरु साउथ एंड एनी डिस्कशन इन बेंगलुरु साउथ कांट हैपन विदाउट फिल्टर कॉफी एंड हु बेटर देन तेजस्वी सूर्य द एम पी ऑफ बेंगलुरु साउथ टू टेक अस अराउंड एंड शो सम ग्रेट फिल्टर कॉफी प्लेसेस एंड ऑल्सो डिस्कस पॉलिटिक्स रिमेम्बर इट्स इलेक्शन सीजन तेजस्वी थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग थैंक यू हरीश ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टॉकिंग टू यू हैव हाइड कॉफी हियर Yes, this is a very popular joint. It's a, a new place that started here. Okay. So um, I will get you a filter coffee. Yes. You want it strong or light? I mean strong. Kana. Here it is strong filter coffee. Upon dalu bande. Here it is. This is Bella. Yeah. Bella. Bella. Just take it. Okay. So it, it's a new trend that's catching up. Yes. Jaggery. Filter coffee with jaggery. Yes. Are you a I fan mean, of it? I mean, it tastes better, but honestly, the glycemic index is also—it's all the same. Same, it's yeah. It is a same. myth. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just a feel-good factor. Absolutely, yeah. Even in terms of calorie, I'm told it's just yeah, a minimal difference. Yeah, the same. true. So, but their uh, aloo bun is actually very good. Oh, so okay. Try. Let me take one. You should. Yeah. yeah. So, tell us how's uh, election campaigning going on? Great. Uh, uh, today you. came along with yeah. us to bamanhalli hmm. one of the largest uh, constituencies assembly constituencies in bengaluru south um we are doing very well the enthusiasm among people to vote for prime minister narendra modi on the 26th of april is growing by the day hmm. uh especially among first time voters young voters wow look at this yeah okay first time so, voters so filter coffee and a very traditional tumbler yes yeah so um especially among first time voters uh women voters and uh, um the elderly yeah. the enthusiasm is uh, very palpable uh hi i am uh, i am expecting a better uh, turnout this time okay. at the polling booths let me come and share here. for you See. Come. yeah so i am hoping for a better turnout also this time hmm. and also um uh that is of course going to reflect i hope in the in better margins hmm. of victory in bengaluru south hmm. now we have seen this whole narrative growing uh, ever since this congress government came that the guarantees of this congress government five guarantees they will be a game changer you've been traveling across yes. bangalore south you've also done fair bit of traveling outside karna outside bangalore as well do you see it resonating with people um i don't think it is going to be an important factor in the elections for two reasons hmm. one the electorate understands the voter hmm. understands that this election is a national election hmm. the objective of this election is to choose the country's leader for the next 5 years hmm. it is to elect the country's prime minister the issues are different the leadership is different and the impact is at a different level hmm. while the guarantees are a very state specific issue hmm. the issues and the narrative in this election is pan india hmm. the leadership is at the national level the, the this is a modi election hmm. so i don't think there is going to be uh, much of an impact because of this second even the delivery of these guarantees itself is very patchy hmm. especially hmm. in uh, urban centers like bengaluru hmm. um, the delivery of the um, uh, guarantees is also very patchy hmm. so the track record of delivery the track record of governance is also something that the voter will contrast his experience with hmm. whereas he is also a beneficiary of narendra modi guarantees hmm. let me give you just three uh, uh, you know uh, statistics on welfare schemes of the prime minister hmm. that have greatly resonated with voters of bengaluru south hmm. our constituency has a large number of elderly people yes it also has a large number of um, uh, you know uh, lower middle class and middle yeah. class people so i started expanding the janaushadhi kendra network since the last 5 years hmm. in 2019 we had 14 janaushadhi kendras today we have 132 plus janaushadhi kendras in bangalore in south. just bengaluru south we okay. have one of the highest janaushadhi kendra networks for a parliamentary constituency hmm. in the whole country yes 2 lakh people use the janaushadhi kendras every month hmm. the annual savings is about 25 crore hmm. so people call janaushadhi kendras in the constituency as modi medicals hmm. so yeah, that's I've the that. that's the kind of connect now with respect to aishman bharat hmm. so from the first day we uh, you know started 
you know, I took office, we started registration of Mayushman Bharat in a big scale. Mm. There are 2 lakh card holders in mm. our constituency and in the last 5 years, 1.5 lakh free treatments have mm. been given. The quantum, the monetary quantum of the 1.5 lakh treatments mm. is 431 crore rupees. Mm. So that is the scale of the Ayushman Bharat scheme. Then take the PM Swanidhi Yojana, yeah. the street vendors uh, yeah. credit mm. scheme that the Prime Minister launched after COVID. 46,000 street vendors in just my constituency have benefited out mm. of this scheme. So on one hand, you have the Prime Minister deliver mm. on the promises through his welfare schemes, which have actually touched people. Mm. And on the other hand, you have big statements on a patchy track record of implementation, that is the Congress guarantees. And you also have a very enlightened voter who very clearly understands the difference between parliamentary elections, national elections and state elections yeah. and understands that this is a Modi election. The vote is for electing the Prime Minister of the country for the next five years. Yeah. For these two reasons, I don't think the Congress guarantees will have a big impact. Yeah. In fact, uh, Karnataka over the last three decades has traditionally voted differently in Assembly yes. and uh, yes. Lok Sabha election. Uh, since I am mentioning Lok Sabha election, uh, first of all, congratulations. You were one of the most uh, efficient MPs from Bangalore. BPAC put out that report yes. in terms of raising issues, uh, the number of questions asked, attendance, everything. Is that a factor that you think people would uh, think about? Especially because Bangalore South has an educated, Absolutely. enlightened population. Absolutely. I am very happy that uh, an organization um, that is at the forefront of civic hmm. advocacy in a city like BPAC hmm. actually put this uh, report card out. Uh, so that people are more aware when they are going to vote. Yeah. Um, over the last uh, uh, five years, um, I am the MP who has raised the highest number of questions in the parliament from Karnataka, highest number of debates participated in Karnataka, highest number of, uh, 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 the highest attendance in the uh, uh, parliament and also in terms of spending of MP lad in the constituency, mm -hmm. They have ranked me the top performer MP in the yes. in the state and in the city, and I'm glad that uh, you know an organisation as reputed as BPAC did that. But also, Harish, over the last five years, I have been amongst our people, especially in times of crisis and when they needed me the most. You are referring to COVID. COVID, mm. because you know, there was a time when Bengaluru was registering mm. 30 to 40 thousand cases every day. Yes. And you know how there was absolutely no way people could access a bed hmm. in the city because of a very opaque bed allocation system in the yes. BBMP. It was me and our MLAs who exposed the black marketing of the beds in record 36 hours, revamped the whole system by building a new software and from zero availability of beds, we uh, made 4,000 beds available for people of Bengaluru. I also set up the country's largest oxygen concentrator bank yeah. run by an MP office and to more than 2,000 people in the constituency supplied oxygen concentrators mm. even in the V hours of the morning, mm. saved lives. Mm. In 30 days we revamped four defunct hospitals, added 350 ICU beds. Mm. To more than 4 lakh families we supplied ration kits and ensured home step, doorstep delivery of food, medicines etc. So we were there with people at the time of vaccination, at the time of, you know, the biggest crisis that we have faced in the last five years collectively. Post that, our focus was on bringing big ticket infrastructure projects to Bengaluru. And I must tell you that the last five years have been a game changer for Bengaluru as a city because we have been blessed with so many big ticket projects thanks to the Prime Minister's push for Bengaluru. The suburban rail project was pending for 40 years, we got it cleared. Mm. Just in the last five years, we have got sanctioned and started the construction for the airport line metro for 75 kilometers. We completed and sanctioned uh, and uh, commissioned operations on the purple line mm. from uh, Chalagatta to Kadugodi. We have 7 to 8 lakh ridership per day mm, thanks yes. to that. The stalemate because of uh, lack of coordination between agencies of the yellow line mm. was resolved and the testing on the yellow line has also commenced. Yeah. Yeah. This year, September, we will launch operations on the yellow line. Mm. We also built 
the satellite town ring road at a cost of 15,800 crore, which is going to greatly decongest Bengaluru. Three weeks ago, 80 kilometers of that stretch was inaugurated by the Prime Minister. This last five years, we have also built a new airport terminal, Terminal 2, Kempegoda yes. International Airport at 5,500 crore. UNESCO declared it to be the world's best airport terminal. Yeah. We did that to Bengaluru. You are seeing these electric buses here. We got 1,500 electric buses under the FAME scheme hmm. and increased the capacity of the BMTC in the city. So all of these are very important public infrastructure, uh, you know, public mobility interventions that we did. After the DJ Haldi, KJ Haldi riots, I met with Amit Shah ji, requested him to set up a NIA branch office in Bengaluru quickly, which he, in a record uh, two months, uh, set it up for Bengaluru. Yes. You are seeing now, after the Rameshwaram Cafe blast, yeah. how the NIA is leading the efforts into in the investigation. From the time of SM Krishna's chief ministership, Bengaluru's demand hmm. of uh, having a U.S. consulate was pending. Yes. Last year when, you know, uh, Prime Minister went to U.S., he got uh, the U.S. consulate approved to Bengaluru. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is again a very big uh, uh, ease of living project hmm. for Bengaluru city. When um, uh, our, uh, my own constituency people suffered because of the Guru Raghavendra Cooperative hmm. Bank's uh, uh, fraud, up to 2,000 crores and close to 40,000 depositors literally came on streets. Close to 80% of depositors got their monies back thanks to the amendment to the DICGC which yes. the Prime Minister was sensitive to push. Mm. When the Mantri Serenity project was almost on the brink of collapse mm. under the Swami fund, mm. I was able to get 1,500 crores um, as a stopgap, uh, as a, uh, a funding. In two years, we got 2,000 houses built and we got 2,000 houses you know, uh, Gruha Pravesham done hmm. at the same time. In fact, since you mentioned uh, Mantri Serenity, uh, I was speaking to the residents and I'm told it doesn't even fall in your constituency. Yes. So it wasn't an electoral consideration that forced you to do it. Of course, I mean, most of these projects that I mentioned, Harish, including yeah. Mantri Serenity, the STRR, the hmm. metro to airport, these are uh, not, uh, uh, you know, projects that are exclusive to Bengaluru South. Yes. So in constituencies like Bengaluru, hmm. which is a large metropolis, hmm. you cannot be uh, demarcating, uh, you know, your work yes. geographically limited to your parliamentary constituency. You have to work and approach Bengaluru city as a whole. Hmm. And that's what all the three MPs of BJP in the last five years we have done. Yeah. So uh, people have seen this work. People yeah. have seen me being with them through the five years. People have seen that... Uh, even at the most challenging of times I've been with them, we have shown credible results on the ground. And which is why I'm very confident that this time, coupled with uh, the work that we have done and mostly the Prime Minister's ever-increasing popularity. I mean, you know, I'm falling short of words to explain this phenomena, Harish. In fact, since you mentioned the Prime Minister, I've spoken to uh, yeah. Newsweek and he's the second Prime Minister to be on the covers yeah, of the Indra magazine. Gandhi. Yes. And he makes a point saying that across the globe, yeah whether it's democracy or otherwise, we've had leaders facing some sort of a pressure at the end of their second yeah. term. And he says we are the only one. Absolutely. We are not facing pressure. We are in, in fact growing in popularity. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think there is any world leader hmm. ever in human history who has faced democratic elections at this scale, at a population of this scale, not once, not twice, but going the third time before people and with each successive election his popularity is only skyrocketing yeah this is a case study for world uh, you know uh, 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 political analysts commentators political scientists at a global level to understand this phenomena sure. and i think this is a result of delivery hari delivery on the ground that people's lives have gotten transformed and the transformation is across socio-economic spectrum. Mm. You speak to the richest person, he says, my business is flourishing because of the Prime Minister's pro-market policies. Mm. You speak to the poorest, he tells you, I opened bank account for the first time in my life after Prime Minister started the Jandhan account. Mm. You speak to the women, they say, the Prime Minister gave us izzat, gave us respect. So everyone has got something you're saying. The youth will say, you know, Startup India is benefiting me. Mm. So I don't think there is a bigger force in India today who is the uniter in chief, yeah. who brings all Indians together hmm. as the idea of Modi unites India today. Okay, uh, great coffee.
I'll bring you back to state politics because we've had quite a bit of uh, discussion over it. One aspect is since you mentioned uh, the suburban train and metro and airport, whether it's Mr. D.K. Suresh or others who've been talking about this, are saying, well, the union government doesn't give 100% of the money in that. 20% comes from union government. The state government pitches in with another 20%. Rest is loan. The state stands guarantee. Why is the union government taking credit for it? The state doesn't stand guarantee for all of these international projects, whether it is the metro, hmm. that is the JICA funded project, hmm. or whether it is K-Ride, the suburban. Hmm. All the sovereign guarantees are provided by the union government. So let me correct them on that. Second, all these big ticket infrastructure projects are both state and central government funded projects to an extent. Yes. But without the center giving the push, hmm. without the union government actually catalyzing the approvals and hmm. the uh, finance uh, approvals for uh, b these projects, hmm. they never take off. Hmm. Uh, let me also tell you that for a project like the suburban rail, hmm. One of the reasons why the project is not, uh, you know, moving fast is because it's a SPV with the state government putting its officers as the head of the organization. Mm -hmm. And most of these officers lack the technical expertise, the competence to lead it. Mm -hmm. I have been advocating that the suburban rail project must be handed over mm -hmm. to the Indian railways mm -hmm. and the Indian railways should be held accountable for its execution within a limited span of time. Is that why there's a delay? Because we have spoken about this multiple yes. times. The Prime Minister, you know, uh, in fact, on the uh, day of uh, laying the stone, yeah. he said 40 months. And I think now Mr. M.B. Patel is saying somewhere around 2027. 20, yeah. Is that the delay because there is confusion between the union government, state government? Or are you saying give it to the union you know, railway ministry? It's better. Uh, Harish, the reason for the delay hmm. You know, there was a very long uh, and a very detailed review meeting that uh, Ashwini Vaishnavji took when he was in Bengaluru. In the course of the meeting, it came to light that most of the officers heading the project, who are state uh, government, uh, you know, uh, appointees, just simply lack the technical expertise required to head and work on a project as technically demanding as a suburban rail, which is a technically intensive project. Yes. So when we discussed this uh, problem with him, he was kind enough to say that if the state government without politics and without making it a political issue but keeping in consideration the interests of the city will hand over the, the suburban rail project to the Indian railways and hold the Indian railways accountable within a set period of time, the Indian railways can deliver on it. So I think uh, for the welfare of the city, and from the point of view that this is an organization, that uh, this is a project that requires and demands technical expertise, we must be pushing for handing over of the project to Indian Railways. And I'm sure Indian Railways um, has now been executing such uh, top-notch uh, uh, projects across the country. They'll be able to do this. Yeah. The other project or rather the other mega controversy over the last three, four months has been the tax devolution and the drought relief. We've seen drought relief... Uh, in fact, Nirmala Sitaraman addressing a presser in Bangalore and somewhere indicating, yes, there could have been a delay. The Congress says by October, the report was ready. December, the high-level meeting was supposed to happen. You have raised two issues with respect to tax devolution. Numbers to numbers. Hmm. The 10 years of UPA hmm. and the 10 years of the Modi government. Hmm. The Modi government has given Karnataka 258% percent more money hmm. than what was given to Karnataka in the 10 years of the UPA, hmm. both in terms of tax devolution hmm. and the central government. Sidramaya uh, says the tax collection has increased, that, that's why the number is increased. Percentage-wise, it's not, he argues. The percentage is decided by the Finance Commission hmm. and the Finance Commission is not a handmaiden of the union government. Hmm. It is a constitutional body. So if in the last, uh, in the 14th Finance Commission, hmm. the percentage of allocation was higher to Karnataka, going by their own argument. Hmm. If that is the logic, hmm. then why are you not giving the credit then hmm. that in the 14th Finance Commission, Karnataka got a higher share, hmm. therefore Modi government should be credited. Hmm. So when things go well, hmm. then you don't credit the government. Hmm. 
then in your perspective if things are not going well for karnataka then you blame the modi government this is nothing but politics people are seeing this they are saying 6000 6000 crore rupees special grant 5400 uh, yeah. crore special grant for the orr and uh, uh, the peripheral, peripheral ring, road. ring road has been held up this is again a lie hmm. nowhere in the 15th finance commission document is the peripheral ring road even mentioned hmm. and the final document of the 15 finance commission does not make any mention of any special grant for any state let alone karnataka okay now with so number to number hmm. the amount of money karnataka has received over the last 10 years hmm. has multiplied okay and in addition to that just a city like bengaluru has got 1 lakh 30000 crore worth of project sanctioned in the last 5 years hmm. thanks to the prime minister's leadership now come to the drought relief issue yes the last uh, uh, every uh, finance commission the 15th finance commission included mm. allocate certain amount of money for the sdr of ndrf yes karnataka has already received 659 crores uh, for drought relief under the sdrf mm. ndrf which they can you make use of before demanding more money from the state central government mm. let the state government tell what they have done mm. with the 650 crores Hmm. what have they done with the money that they already have with the state hmm. to alleviate the concerns of the drought hmm. now coming to the second point the state government has said that we have asked for 17000 odd crore as the relief yes now compare again number to number percentage to percentage now let's go to percentages because hmm. sidramaiya likes to argue in percentages hmm. in the 10 years of the upa from 2004 to 7, 14 whenever the state asked a particular dot relief amount hmm. the union government headed by the congress on an average gave hmm. 8% of the amount asked okay okay suppose hmm. we have asked 100 rupees they have given 8 rupees, 8 rupees. okay the last 10 years under the modi government each time karnataka has raised in uh, a dot relief estimate we have got 38% on an average from the union government you tell me whether 8% is more or 38% is more hmm. why is it that sidramaiya does not argue on these things hmm. so the delay is because they submitted the report late hmm. the because of the um, enforcement of the code of conduct the meetings couldn't take place but as and when the meeting will take place hmm. the union government will stand by karnataka provide karnataka with funds more than any other government in the history of independent india has ever done we have done so in the past we will do again okay my final question to you what is it that you are promising for bengaluru south in the next 5 years for two reasons i am asking you this one uh, we have seen commercialization increasing in south even in residential areas yes. it's a issue water is a issue and at the same time there's a huge legacy that mr anand kumar has left behind so expectations also increase what is it that you are promising for bangalore south for the next 5 years harish people of bengaluru have seen me mm. our constituency people have seen me on the ground mm. in action inside of parliament outside of parliament on the streets inside vidhan sabha ministries etc mm. fighting for the rights of our people the interests of our people relentlessly the last 5 mm. years which is why not just bpac mm. even a reputed news organization like lokmat mm. recognize me as the best debutant parliamentarian in the 17th lok sabha so people of the constituency are very proud of the fact that i have put in so much of hard work now the next 5 years are crucial for bengaluru because we have started big infrastructure projects this 5 years yes. the suburban rail has just started to work on the two corridors has begun we have to complete it expedite it the comprehensive mobility plan for the city envisages 317 kilometers of metro yes especially the metro phase 3 which passes through the whole of bengaluru south yes. is pending approval with the union cabinet i have to get that done we need to expand the metro coverage this very year by september we we aim to uh, throw open the services on the yellow line so electronic city five, gets connected yes rv road to electronic city 4 to 5 lakh people will uh, be able to commute every day on the metro so that's another priority for me out of this 268 kilometers of the strr we have completed 80 kilometers the work on the remaining portion is completing we need to expedite that once that is done close to 30% of transitory heavy vehicular traffic in bengaluru will get you know eliminated from the core of the city huge decongestion will happen for the city 
the work on uh, uh, we have got the in principle approval for opening of the us consulate the state yes. government is not giving land hmm. i have to you know uh, a uh, really uh, uh, you know uh, pressurize the state government and get the land and get the us consulate done that is my priority again will prr ever become a reality peripheral i mean so we have already got the strr which is pretty much you know uh, uh, serves uh, the purpose serves yeah. the same kind of uh, purpose yeah. prr at this point in time looks very difficult because of the amount of money that is required for land acquisition, acquisition. Yes. and i don't think honestly the state government has the kind of money to uh, you know uh, uh, fund the prr i personally believe uh, i am i am not a very big advocate of building roads as a mm. solution to decongesting yes. the city i am more of a believer mm. on not i mean not a blind believer on the basis of facts on the basis of experience mm. that mass rapid rail is the only way to decongest urban centers so i will push mm. as much as possible to make the 317 km metro inside the city mm. possible that is another priority area uh we have also proposed the indian railway has also proposed the circular, circular ring railway yes, yes. so that is again going to be like a strr in rail hmm. so that is again at the very conceptual stage now hmm. the feasibility report is being done so if uh, you know that comes out and it is going to uh, be positive for the city we will push for that to happen we have also proposed for an extension of the suburban rail to hoskote to chikmagalur yes. to hmm. tumkur etc we will work on that so i think the next 5 years my vision for bengaluru is to actually bring world class infrastructure hmm. to bengaluru city hmm. and in the next 5 years i think seeing this the, the pace at which bengaluru is growing even our airport terminal 2 won't be enough won't be enough so the work has already started the blueprint has already started on the metro i mean the airport terminal 3 so i will push for that as as well and get enough funds from the hmm. central government to make that uh, you know a reality and just like how i have done in the last 5 years i will fight for the rights of our people whether it is language whether it is uh, uh, you know our water whether it is you know our heritage both inside of the parliament and outside you know it was in the very first session of the parliament harish i raised the issue of permitting people in karnataka and other uh, non hindi speaking states to write central government exams including banking exams and capf exams crpf exams yes. in regional languages that got done yes so i will continue pushing for such reforms